Hello， 大家好，我是可人。Welcome to my unconventional Chinese class. Uh, first, I gotta thank you guys. Thank you so much for uh following my Facebook page or YouTube channel to learn Chinese. Um, your support is my biggest motivation. So today, um, I want to start a live stream because a lot of you guys ask me how to even start learning Chinese. So I figure this is a pretty good topic. So I prepared some、uh, language learning strategy or、uh, resources for you guys.、Um, first of all, if you do want to learn Chinese, you need to understand how human brains. Acquire second language. Here, I would recommend、uh, Dr. Stephen Karshian's、um, second language acquisition theory. So basically, he believes、uh, the only way human brain can acquire language is to have comprehensible input. So you may ask, what the heck is comprehensible input?、Um, Comprehensible input、uh, is also called TPRS, Total Physical Response Storytelling. It's a teaching method. In this teaching method, teachers are required to give students lots, lots, and lots of very interesting input.、Uh, research shows a new learner, a learner needs to hear a word thirty-eight times. In order to remember this word, to internalize this word, so、uh, I will give you three examples to explain what comprehensible input teaching strategy is like, and that's exactly what you need if you are a language learner.、Um, for the three examples,、uh, I will give you. I will speak in Chinese and give you exactly. The same message, but I will deliver the message in different ways. Now, the first message: I have two eyes, one nose, and a mouth. My nose is big. My nose is red. My nose is black. My hair is black. Now, that's the first message. The second message. I will say it slower, and I will say it very clear. I have two eyes, one nose, one mouth, one mouth. My nose is big. My nose is red. My hair is black. Now I will give you the third message. Remember, they're the same. I'm just delivering it in a different way. In the third way,、um, I will use body language and also pictures to help you understand. 我有两个眼睛，一个鼻子。一个嘴巴，我的鼻子大大的，我的嘴巴是红色的，我的头发是。黑色的。Okay, now please tell me which message is easier for you to understand. I guess everyone will say the third way because I use body language and stuff. Now the third way、uh, is part of the strategy of comprehensible input because in this teaching strategy. Uh, we need to use target language to teach you. More than ninety percent target language, but we need to make sure you understand. 
people, uh, teachers, TPRS teachers always say this. You don't need to speak Chinese to understand Chinese as long as your teacher give you, uh, gives you comprehensible input. Now, uh, that's the first tip I want to give you if you want to learn Chinese. Whatever you learn, your input, uh, listening or reading, needs to be 100% comprehensible. Otherwise, you are not going to learn much. By 100% comprehen uh, imp comprehensible input, I mean 100%. You can understand everything. Not 50%, not 80%, 100%. So some teachers may tell you, uh, in order to improve your listening skills, you can do passive listening, which means you just go brush your teeth, take a shower, and you put Chinese uh, in the background. And that way, uh, you can get used to Chinese and improve your listening. Let me tell you something seriously. That's bullshit. Passive listening is bullshit. You need 100% comprehension. You need to understand everything you read and everything you hear. Only in that way your brain is learning the language. Okay, now the second tip. The second tip is if you want to learn Chinese, you need to know the right order to learn Chinese. By right order, I mean this order. From listening to speaking to reading to writing. Why? Because in TPRS teaching strategy, we believe in uh, we should learn languages like how babies learn languages. Let me explain this to you. So for as a Chinese, when I was a kid, when I was a baby, my mom wouldn't hold me and say, okay, Karen, follow me. Apple, apple, pingguo, pingguo, pingguo. My mom is not gonna say that, right? Babies learn language by listen first. First, you listen a lot, and you need to know the meaning of whatever you hear. Then you can memorize the words or sentence structure, whatever. That requires a lot of comprehensible input. And the second step, so the baby grow up a little bit. Uh, the baby heard apple, apple, apple in different situations a lot. Then the baby can uh, talk already. Only when you hear a word over and over again, you can pronounce this word naturally. So a lot of people will ask me, uh, Liu Lao Shi, how do I improve my tones? I always sound like a foreigner. I think the best way to improve your tone is still comprehensible input because you need to hear uh, the words over and over again. Then you will understand what's the correct way to say the word. You don't even need the teachers to correct you because you heard it enough. So speaking comes from listening. Um, after you hear the words enough, you can naturally say the word correctly. Does that make sense? Uh, so in my class, in my beginner, uh, beginner's class, I never force my students to talk. I only need them to show me they can understand what I said, listening. And then one day they heard me say the same word enough, enough times they can say it naturally. And their tones are perfect, not because uh, there's magic, there's miracle. It's only because they heard the word enough. Now, the third step is reading. Um, after you understand the sound, you can link the sound with the pronunciation. You can talk, then you can read the characters. Um, when you're reading the, the characters, you should try to recognize the Chinese characters or even just pinyin. Mm, it's very important that you can listen and speak 
first, and then you read the Chinese characters. Otherwise, uh, you cannot link the sound, pronunciation, meaning, and structure together. I don't know if that makes sense. When you see a Chinese character, it's really important for you to know the sound and the meaning at the same time, and you can say it already. And then it will be the last step. The next step will be writing characters. I see a lot of Chinese teachers, they will try to teach you how to write a character the first day you learn that word. Uh, I don't agree with this teaching method because if you don't know the meaning, if you don't know the sound, if you cannot say it, if you cannot recognize the structure, the structure, that means you don't really know this word yet. You didn't internalize this word. Then, no matter how many times you write a character, you're just drawing, you're copying, you're not writing a character. So it's really vital for you to be able to know the sound, know the meaning, be able to say it, be able to recognize it, and then write the characters. And then you're really writing the character. You can analyze the structure of the character. You're not just drawing the character. Uh, and that will definitely help you memorize the character. Mm. So when we were kids in China, of course, first we heard adults speaking Chinese, and then we are able to communicate with adults. And then we go to school to learn Chinese, to learn how to recognize and write Chinese. That's the natural way to learn Chinese. You don't want to miss the order because everything has a pattern. Now we're going to come to the third tip. Uh, the third tip is like a lot of students will ask me, hey, Karen, how do I learn Chinese for free? I don't want to hire a teacher. I don't want to buy classes. How do I learn it for free? So I, after years and years of teaching, I collected a lot of uh, free or not free resource. And today I will share them with you. Right now you don't have it in the uh, title of my video, but I'm going to post it in my comment later. The first one, if you have never learned Chinese and you want to learn Chinese from zero, I would recommend Duolingo. This is an app that you can learn Chinese from. Basically, they're going to teach you uh, new words and help you practice over and over again. Lots of repetition, but in a fun way. In a fun way. Duolingo is this one. And then uh, after you have some vocabulary and you want to practice by yourself, I will recommend Quizlet. Especially when you learn with a team. You guys can create Quizlet flashcards together. And then on Quizlet, they're going to create a lot of games for a team to play together. The second resource, uh, if you want to learn the basics, like uh, how's the weather today? Sunny day, rainy day, snowy day, blah, blah, blah. Or how to count from one to 10. Like the basics, I will recommend two YouTubers. The first one is learn Chinese with Emma. The second one is Yo-Yo Chinese. They have a lot of basic information about Chinese and really good ones. Uh, the third one, if you, if you want to learn common uh, expression, high frequency words, uh, the, but, but not something you can learn from textbook, something that's fun and you can use with your Chinese friends, then I recommend you should follow my YouTube channel unconventional Chinese with Karen. Uh, my plan is to post one video per week to teach you guys how to uh, use common, uh, common phrases to chat with your Chinese friend, to kind of surprise them, you know, to make them say, damn, how do you know that word? Like only native Chinese speaker know the word. That's my goal for you guys. Oh, and also some of you guys ask me uh, if I can create some lessons for HSK test. I'm looking into that. Uh, I'm, I'm checking the vocabulary, grammar, and tests. 
and hopefully one day I can create videos like that. The fourth resource is if you want to learn Chinese from fun blogs and interesting short stories, I would recommend Lu Lao Shi, uh, Lu Lao Shi's uh, you, uh, blog. It's called Ignite Chinese, and I will post it on my comment later. The fifth one is if you want to learn Chinese from a textbook, I'm super anti textbook. Any TPRS teacher will be anti Chinese book, uh, textbooks. Uh, we, we believe you guys should learn the language through novels because novels are interesting. Uh, good language learners always read and you want to read interesting stuff. So we recommend novels. Uh, if you go to Google and just type TPRS Chinese books, there are some novels. And if you have never learned Chinese, you want to start from zero, I would recommend Linda Lee's Shei Hao Kan, Who Looks Good. Uh, basically, it's like, like this. It's a red book. And it costs like maybe 10 bucks. This one. Shei Hao Kan, Who Looks Good. Okay, and the sixth one is if you're very, very serious about learning Chinese and you want to take HSK test, uh, you want to be able to write Chinese like very official way, then I will recommend this website. It's called um, Learn, Learn Mandarin from Chinese Stories. So basically what they do is uh, they pick according to the HSK test, they pick different topics, uh, vocabulary, grammar, and they create stories for you guys. And they didn't just create crazy stories. They pick like story from uh, real people, historic uh, stories or Chinese idioms, blah, blah, something like that. And after you read the story, after you learn the vocab vocabulary, you read the stories, they have after class like exercise for you. But since it's so complicated, definitely it costs some money. I don't know how much it costs. And the eighth one is, I know you guys don't uh, want to pay. Some of you guys don't want to pay, which is okay. Uh, I already recommended some uh, apps for you. But if you do have the money, I strongly recommend you get a tutor. Get a teacher or a tutor who is a TPRS teacher who can give you lots and lots of meaningful, comprehensive input. Um, because a good teacher is really a shortcut. Now, here's the deal. You know, you need to hear the word 38 times to remember it forever. How are you going to remember this? Are you going to read the word apple, 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 apple 38 times? It's not going to work because you need the word in context not just the word itself. You need to use it in conversation, in real life situation. Then a native speaker can really help you with that. So if you do have the money, I strongly recommend get a teacher. Uh, another app I forgot to recommend, it's called Placo. Mm -hmm. um, this is the app. Basically, you can find a Chinese character. Oh man. You can find the Chinese character on this by just typing the pinyin. Or uh, you can take a, you can use your camera, put the camera on top of the, the character. It can recognize the character for you too. Or you prefer to write, uh, you can write the character and find the word. They will give you the pronunciation, different meanings, examples, and also that's for free. But if you pay a little bit, they're gonna, have other, they're gonna create games or tests for you to help you memorize characters. But this app, um, I think if you want to learn Chinese characters very well, you should definitely get this app. Um, this app, I think is gonna be the biggest Chinese learning app. Not one of the biggest, it's gonna be the biggest because it really helps students solve their problems when they learn Chinese characters.
Um, the last one is, I strongly recommend you to get a language partner. A language partner is not a teacher. A language partner is someone who will engage you in conversation, who will try to understand what you're saying, even though your grammar is not perfect, even though your pronunciation is not perfect. But this, this partner really wants to hear you and try to understand you. Um, a language partner is someone who's interesting, interested in you as a person. So when you guys are having a conversation, you don't need to worry about grammar. You don't need to worry about if your pronunciation is good or not. You just want to communicate. I think the most, uh, the most important thing in learning language is first, ask questions. Second, joke. These two things, your partner can help you to do that. When you are asking a question, asking question is a very high level language ability. When you are asking questions, you're trying to listen. You're trying to seek for an answer. When you're joking with each other, you have the emotions. You want to learn a language with emotions. So these are things uh, a language partner can help you to reach. Uh, I think these are all of my suggestions. If you guys have questions, please let me know. I will try my, I will try my very best to uh, make videos to solve your problems. Let me check if you guys have questions. Okay, no questions for now. Well, thank you very much for your time and have a good weekend, guys. 再见。